And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. So glad to have you tonight. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And we are excited to be with you as we continue the series, The Bible in the Light of Our Redemption. We're using um, E.W. Kenyon's Bible in the Light of Our Redemption study guide. And um, if you want to get this, you can pick it up on Amazon.com, Walmart.com. And um, I, I suggest it because they are more... Well, they're double, so I would, I, I would recommend those other sites and uh, that you um, gather it there or gain it there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, um, happy to have you. We're going to jump in here and get after the Word of God tonight and say, Jesus is Lord. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. All right. All right. Jesus is Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. All uh, right. We've covered creation, you know, the reason for creation. Then we covered the reason for the creation of man. And uh, one of the key points we kind of um, summarized with last week was God had vested into man the authority to uh, bring God joy, you know, because of, he's the, the, of the father heart of God, because of the father heart of God. And... Um, but then we come now to the treason of man and the uh, results of Adam's uh, high treason sin. And, um, you know, we, as often as we study the Bible and study the fall of man, we, we major so much of the time on the physical aspect of man dying. Remember, man, man was not created to die. Man was created to live forever. God designed him that way. God designed him um, to not die. It was only when he died. Let's go, if you will, um, to the uh, to Genesis. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, kind of getting there, Genesis chapter one. We'll 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 dive into that in a minute. Um, so we have man committing sin. And the, the, the age-old debate and question is, what was the nature of the sin? And um, one, it could not have been the law, that he broke the law, because the law was not given. Um, as we understand, the law of Moses was not given, so he didn't you know, violate walking too far on the Sabbath or uh, eating you know, an unclean animal. Um, it, it, it couldn't have been those things. So what was it? What was it that would cause and, and, and require Christ to come as incarnation and suffer for man and um, because of the sin of man? God had given him so much authority and the intellect that only he could commune with God, that was the only place he, that communion could take place, was him and the Father. And um, his hand, and, and in his hands was the joys or the sorrows of God. Um, so what kind of sin did Adam commit? Adam did not commit a sin of, you know, I just disobeyed. Adam committed high treason. As uh, Kenyon refers to it, says he's the Benedict Arnold of all time, of, his, of, of eternity. Um, God conferred upon Adam the authority to rule the universe. We know that Adam's authority went up to, but did not include the throne of God itself, but it, it went that far. And how we know that is that when Moses created the, um, the tabernacle and the uh, the blood had to be put on everything, including the mercy seat before the throne of God, telling us and all things that, that were tainted by sin had to be purged by blood. And so the mercy seat in front of the throne of God had to be cleansed with blood, which was the final place of Adam's authority, meaning it went up to but did not include the throne of God. 
That's how far reaching uh, God made Adam's authority. And that is why when we read scriptures about uh, in, in Job, how the, the sons of God, referring to the fallen angels and Satan, um, went before the throne of God. They went to where Adam's authority had been. Why? Because it had been delivered to Satan. Adam committed high treason. Um, Genesis 1, 28, God said, I've given you the, um, I mean, so God's blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. Complete control and governance of it. Psalm 8, 6 says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Thou hast created him a little lower than Elohim, than yourself. Um, so Adam turned this legal dominion over to the very hands of God's enemy, Satan. Treason is unpardonable. It's, it's, a, it's a capital crime. Um, if you uh, look at historically, uh, treason, you are executed for treason. We, we just, um, there's even rumor now that the previous chief of staff uh, committed treason with China during the last administration. And that, if that were to be carried out, his penalty would be death under um, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Execution for treason. Particularly in that case with a foreign nation. Um, so high treason has always been considered unpardonable. Adam was not blind to what he was doing. Um, he wasn't deceived. Now, I remember growing up as a kid in Sunday school, we had pictures of Adam fishing over in some lake somewhere on the other side of the garden, and Eve shows up with some fruit and uses an apple to make it look white. We don't know that it was an apple. All we know is the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Bible never said it was an apple. You could have drawn an orange or a banana. It wouldn't have mattered. Um, it would have been just as accurate. We don't know what it was other than the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so in those pictures we used to do in Sunday school, you know, of course, they would say, those are misogynic Christians, you know. Well, give me a break. Just anyways, misunderstanding of scripture. It's not really reading the scripture. Adam's binding his own business. Yep, just a fishing, you know, with a cane pole. Now, he didn't have a rod reel. He's over there fishing with his cane pole. And Eve shows up, hands of this fruit from behind. And he's like, okay. And eats it. Oh, it's the, it's the wrong fruit. Fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know. And he, he, it wasn't the fruit of the tree of life. It was the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Look at 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2. Verse 13. And then we'll read something that blows a lot of people's theology right out the window. Anybody here want your theology blown out the window? We all went to the same Bible school. It's not going to happen. You already you been taught. Okay. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now, she was in transgression. Adam committed high treason. She made a misstep. Adam knew what he was doing. So Eve, Eve was deceived by the devil. Why? Her, her deception, her deception, she was deceived. Go back to Genesis uh, 3. She was deceived in regards to the final authority and reality and truth of God's word. Look at Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made, the Lord God had made, um, Jehovah Elohim, okay? And he said unto the woman, yea, the, hath God, he said to the woman, yea, hath God said, now that's King Jimmy, did the Lord really mean, okay? That's really, what's, that's really the question. Did the Lord really mean that you should not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, 
but of the fruit of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. God has said, you should not eat it. Then she, she, gets, she gets confused. Neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. It's not what the Lord said. They were there to tend the garden. Hello? He didn't tell them not to touch it. See, you don't argue with the devil. You don't have a conversation with the devil. When Satan tempted Jesus, he didn't go, well, you know, the Lord really didn't mean that. He meant this. He just said, it's also written and gave the scripture. Three times he did that. Even when Satan tried to quote scripture out of context, Jesus came back and said, yeah, but it's also written that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God in him, uh, uh, you know. And, you know, that was it. He didn't have a conversation with the devil. Well, Satan's a master deceiver. I said Satan is a master deceiver. If he can get you questioning or um, what's the other word I'm looking for, um, confused about what the word says, he'll, he'll whip you and he'll whip you big. I said he'll whip you and he'll whip you big. And the serpent said unto the woman, listen to this, ye shall not surely die. For the Lord, for the, for, listen, let me, let's, let's, let's do something. Let's take this and let's go back to chapter two. Let's see. And look at verses 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, um, we'll probably come to this again later, but I won't go ahead and put it in here. The Hebrew says, literally, when you, when you, um, when you read it correctly and interpret it correctly, the Hebrew says, in dying, thou shalt die. And we'll get into all that later. But that's, that's what the Lord said. Now, let's come back over here to Genesis 3. Okay? And the serpent said, ye shall not surely die. Now, remember, this is Genesis 3. Two, um, before Eve is created from Adam's side. So Adam would have had to tell Eve, don't eat of that because the day you eat of it, you'll die. Okay? Because he told Adam. He didn't tell Eve, he told Adam. And either something got, he either translated it to her wrong or she heard wrong or she didn't, didn't have the whole concept, whatever. But she was misquoting. God didn't say don't touch it. He said don't eat of it. And then, then she did say, I, she did know this much. If you eat it, you're going to die. And here's what Satan says. You, you shall not surely die. And then he does exactly what the devil always does. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then shall your eyes be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Stop. Don't read anymore. He questioned not just the authority of God's word. He questioned God's integrity as to why he gave his word. He's holding out. He's keeping something from you. He doesn't want you to be like him. My goodness. What is a man that thou art mindful of him? You've created him, set him a little lower than yourself. Elohim. God created man to be in his class, to walk in the fellowship with him. The only part of creation when God formed his body from the dust to the ground and then took and breathed into him out of his own spiritual nature into that body he had created, his own self, his own life, his own breath. And man became a living soul or a speaking spirit, the Hebrew literally says. 
Wow. But Adam, but the devil's up here questioning the integrity of God. As to he's holding out on you. Because you're going to eat that. If you eat that, you'll be as God's. They already were. <clears throat> they were already, they were the gods of this world. <coughs> Paul wrote to the church at Corneth and called Satan the god of this world. Satan was not the god of this world until Adam committed high treason and turned that authority over to him. Up until that point, Adam and Eve were the gods of this world. And the devil's got her all flab flabbergasted and whatever and, you know, flipped out and talking stupid. She was in transgression. She got deceived because she got confused and deceived about the word of God. So let me say this. That's just a little side thought. Guard thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. Why? Because the word of God must be protected in your life. Satan will do everything he can to deceive you in regards to the word. He will use experiences. The, uh, the, the, and I hate saying it this way, but I don't know how else to say it. The, um, apparent shortcomings, failures, uh, whatever of other Christians seemingly, you know, unanswered prayer or not answered the way we thought it should be. He'll use anything he can to jab you and to get you into a conversation with him about did God really mean When the word of God was so clear. Hello. He said you'll be as gods. Knowing good and evil. <clears throat> and I always like to say this. Since God told them not to eat the fruit of the tree. Of the knowledge of good and evil. Apparently the knowledge of good and evil wasn't good. I expect to hear some shouting coming through my phone just then. Some hallelujahs. I got to see, I got to see a bunch of little emoticons float across my screen here. Screen here. Come on, guys. Float some emoti emotes. <laughs> Hallelujah. The knowledge of good and evil wasn't good. We were only to know good. God did not, see, God did not create us to know evil. That was never in his plan. Everything about creation. And at, at the end of the day, it said, and God saw that it was good. 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 And actually created man and saw that it was very good. It was all good. We weren't supposed to know evil. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the New Testament, it's the goodness of God that leadeth man to repentance. So, where my, I didn't see any, did you, did you send in the, I don't see any emoticons. That was good preaching right there. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, so, Eve was deceived. All right? She was in transgression. Now look over in Second Tim I mean First Timothy chapter two. First Timothy chapter two. See, some things about what took place in the garden and everything aren't revealed until we get into the New Covenant, the New Testament. And then Paul by revelation writes them out. First Timothy I think we already read this. Um, yep. 
The woman, man was first formed, animal was first formed. He was not deceived. The woman was deceived being in transgression. Adam committed high treason. He wasn't in transgression. He sold out. And with that, the entire human race, sin passed on to all humanity out of his loins. Everyone born was born into sin. Hallelujah. Um, we know it. And so all the authority, all the, say, uh, um, Kenya is the, uh, the first person I ever heard say this. <laughs> Adam was the first man to be born again. He was born from spiritual life unto spiritual death. Because you see, when he, when he committed high treason, the nature of Satan entered into him. Because he relinquished all authority of everything God gave him and made it subordinate to Satan. Um, why didn't God come in and stop it? Because God had given man the authority. It would be unjust of God to stop Adam from doing what he gave him the right to do. Um, for a number of years, we rented the facility for our church, and um, we, we were the leasee. Alessi, how would you pronounce it? Now, we could have sublet that place. Now, if we had written a contract and sublet it to another tenant and moved out, and they moved in, we couldn't just come in and go, oh, we're taking back over. No, nope, you can't do it. It's illegal. We, you, you sublet it to us. Now, you may be the leaseholder, but you gave it to me. And now I, we, have, we have the right to be here, and you don't. Adam transferred his authority to the devil. Now, because of the nature of Adam's sin, of treason, there was no way for him to get himself out of it. It was unforgivable. Completely unforgivable. He, at the moment that he did that, sold humanity into eternal captivity to Satan. There was nothing he could do to turn it around. Nothing he could do to fix it. There was nothing he could do. So Satan's attained this authority. Uh, God was just. He just couldn't come in and take it back. Um, go ahead and turn to Luke 4. Uh, when Jesus came and on the earth, he recognized, and I don't want to say honored, but he, he walked in recognition of Satan's right to the authority. Hello? Now remember this, because G Jesus was incarnate, but he was born of the Father. He was not in the lineage of Adam in the sense that Adam was his spiritual father. God the Father was. And so Jesus operated outside of Satan's authority. Satan could not rule over Jesus. Remember when Jesus went to the man, um, the, the legion, man with the legion? He said, I know who you are. You're Jesus, the son of, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, the son of God. Have you come to torment us before the time? And he couldn't cast, and they said, cast us into the swine. And they, he, he, he sent them into the pigs. They all went and drowned themselves. Pigs didn't even want the devils. Guy had 2,000 in him. Legion, Roman Legion was 2,000 men. And um, he, didn't say, he didn't go, um, but notice I said, have you come to torment us before the time? What was that? That was Adam's lease. At the end of the lease. Now, whether I have a lease on a building and I sublet it, at the end of the original lease, the sublet lease is no longer valid. It falls back to the original the owner 
who wrote the original lease. And whatever Adam time, we, we, they're, theologically they've, they've guesstimated about 6,000 years is the, um, the time. And because six is the number of man. Um, so they use a numerology. They, they, and listen, none of this, when you kind of get into that stuff, nothing is hard set, hardcore. Um, we're, we're, we're looking at things and, and this is where you kind of like Paul, though we look through a glass darkly, not everything is as clear cut as, um, some people want to make it to be, but Shonda, amen. So, um, but Luke chapter four, and we look down into, um, Well, we'll just start in verse 1. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Now, what happened? Remember, the, uh, he was baptized in the River Jordan. Uh, the Holy Ghost came on him. <coughs> Voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, uh, whom I'm well pleased. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. He, was fa he fasted for 40 days. Um. And the devil said to him, if thou, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it may be made bread. Now, here's the devil. He knows he's the son of God. He's looking at him in the spirit. He's in the spirit realm. He knows who Jesus is. And Jesus didn't go, I'm the son of God. Who are you talking to? He just goes, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil take him, here's what we're coming up to. Devil take him to a high place, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power, that's exosia in the Greek, all this authority will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I give it if thou, therefore, wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now, stop. What do you think Jesus is here for? Here it is. The devil said, I'm going to serve it up to you on a platter. I know what you're here for. You're here to get what Adam gave me. Think about it. He could have said, I won't have to go to the cross. I won't have to die for man's sin. I can get it all back right now if I worship the devil. Subordinating God to Satan and would be um, the completion of the original attempt of Satan to overthrow the heavens. I believe Ezekiel has it that uh, the anointed cherub said, I will ascend my throne into the heavens. I'll be as the most high. He had always wanted to take over heaven and rule over God. And here's the opportunity to get it all back. And you got to think, this is a moment in eternity right here. Every ounce of eternity weighed in the balance as to what Jesus did. If he bows the knee, so people say, well, Satan's a liar. He couldn't tell the truth. He didn't have the authority. Now, that wasn't the lie. The lie was, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give it to you. That was the lie. You see, it was a bona fide, real temptation. Jesus didn't argue and go, you don't have that authority. You can't give it to me. It belongs to God. That's not what he said. In order for it to be a legitimate temptation, Satan told the truth on that part. It's all been given to me, and I can give it to whoever I want, and if you'll worship me, I'll give it to you. Come with me, Luke. The emperor has seen that we can overthrow him and we can rule the universe together as father and son. And 
in the later minute, they were going to get rid of the emperor and take over. Satan wasn't going to give it to Jesus. But he did have the right to give it to him. And Jesus knew it. Jesus didn't argue with the statement, all has been delivered to me and I will give it to whosoever I will. Jesus didn't even address that. If it was, and, if he, and, and he's the son of God. He knows. And if Satan didn't have that authority, he, he could have easily said, you don't have that authority. But the Bible says this was a temptation. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Never addressing what Satan said. Why? Because it was valid. Satan had the authority of those kingdoms. The Bible calls um, the, the, the evil spirits the rulers of the darkness of this world. Principalities, powers. Amen? Rulers in heavenly places. And so, Jesus recognized his authority. Jesus didn't argue with the authority. Um, if the devil lied to Jesus and Jesus didn't know it, then Jesus was not the incarnate son of God. Are you here? Jesus knew that he lied. Amen? And if he, uh, listen, and if Satan was lying, Jesus didn't know it. He's not the incarnate son of God, and it wasn't a temptation. Hello? It's like somebody going to here and there's a car in the street saying, hey, that's my car. I'll give it to you if you'll do such and such. And you know they don't, they, it's not their car. Then you're not tempted to do it. It's not their car. No, we believe the Bible's true. It was a genuine temptation. He was tempted of the devil. Satan, therefore, I mean, Jesus, therefore, recognized that Satan had the authority and the dominion over the kingdoms of the human race, and he could transfer it to whomever he will. Satan said, it has been delivered unto me. Hallelujah. It wasn't given to Satan by God. It was given to Adam by God. Adam gave it to the devil. Satan tempted Adam in the garden because he hated God. And because Adam, man, was the crowning achievement of the heart of the Father God, Satan was doing everything he could to destroy that relationship. But the Father heart's love would not allow it to end there. He had a plan to bring his created companion, his child, the object of his love, back to him. Um, Calvary reveals the, both the spiritual and physical side. The triumph of the love of God over his enemy, Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Adam sinned, he, when Adam sinned, death entered in where there had been no death. Um, it brought spiritual death into humanity. Romans 5, 12. I hope you all enjoying what we're teaching here. This is good stuff. Don't you think this is good stuff? And by the hands, by Romans, uh, Romans, not Acts 5, 12, that's not right. Lord, help me. Romans 5, 12. Acts 5, 12 is good, but it's not, it don't help this, what we're teaching. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed unto all men for all that had sinned. Uh, it gives us the picture of spiritual death. Uh, Entering in and gaining an entrance. Um, the sin of Adam was the doorway to his open his spirit to the entrance of the dread nature of death. How to, uh, that's not hallelujah. Now, there are three kinds of death. We've taught this numerous times. Um, there's spiritual death, physical death, and eternal death, or the second death. Death has never meant 
cessation of existence. And because we're so naturally minded, um, we often look at it that way because a loved one passes away, we can't, you know, and their body's, you know, put into the ground, we don't see it anymore. Uh, eventually it becomes ash to ashes, dust to dust, um, back to the earth and whence it came. It ceased to exist. That body ceased to exist. And that, that's because we're so carnally minded about death. Carnal, car, uh, death doesn't mean cease to exist. It, it really means in biblical terms to be separated from. To be separated from. Now, Paul wrote and said, the body without the spirit is dead. Okay? Spiritual death is the separation. Remember, man is a spirit. Satan is a spirit. God is a spirit. Um, in John 4, 24, uh, you know, God is a spirit. Not, not spirit, but a spirit. Okay? Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Um, I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Amen. Uh, your whole pneuma, um, suke, and soma, uh, three, three different Greek words, pneuma, spirit, suke, soul, soma, your body, your flesh. Um, and then Ephesians 6, 12 um, kind of gives a little insight into um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Satan is a spirit, not flesh and blood. Okay? And so when Adam sinned, committed high treason, he was born again from life unto death. He became a death-doomed mortal being. Now, he died spirit. Remember? We, read, or we talked about earlier how the Hebrew actually said, the day that thou eatest there, thou shalt surely die. The Hebrew literally says, in dying, thou shalt die. What? He died spiritually, separated from the spirit of God. God is life. When Adam was separated from that life, he was spiritually dead. Didn't mean he didn't exist. He was existing outside the life, the nature of God. And was now bound to spiritual death, Satan. And at that point, man's body began to decay. Now, it took 930 years because there was so much of the life of God had been in that body. And it had only known the life of God that it took 930 years for it to degradate and finally die. Now, as man went forward and sin, man was born into sin, that, that became shorter and shorter and shorter. Finally, God had to come in in the Psalms and say, you know, uh, he gave man by, you know, uh, um, by reason of three, three score and ten years and by reason of strength four score years. He had to stop the process or man would have wiped out before he could get the Redeemer here. He would have wiped out the whole thing. Death would have just destroyed man. Uh, and and his, he would have just been dying so quick he wouldn't even been able to live physically. Um. And so he died spiritually. Man, God is a spirit. Man, uh, uh, Satan's a spirit. Man is a spirit. God created man in his image and likeness. Now, see people come along and say, we're all the children of God. No. We were created to be. And Adam had the authority and the right to procreate so that all of us would have been children of God. But because he committed high treason, he saw us all under sin. And now, according to Jesus, over in John uh, 8, 44, ye are of your father, the devil. If you're not born again, Satan's your daddy. Thrill, thrill. I'm not going to get a whole lot of happy faces on that one. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm, okay. All right. I'm sorry. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to run over here. Jesus said in John 8 42, if you were of, if God were your father, you would love me. 
For I proceed forth and came from God, neither came of myself, but he sent me. What, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil. King Jimmy, you are of your father, the devil. Ed Taylor, modern version. The devil is your daddy. Hello? Why? Because Adam committed high treason in the garden and was born again from death, from life unto death, and death reigned on man, oh well, until Jesus came and broke the authority of death. We can't get into that tonight. We got to leave you dead. I'm joking, don't you? We got we to leave the lesson with man not redeemed. Okay? Um, now, God created man as a subordinate spirit. What do I mean by that? Man could only exist in a relationship with another spiritual entity. Intending that man live in a, 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 um, a symbiotic relationship with the Father God. But because of his treason, he entered into that relationship style relationship with the devil. Man is not an independent spirit that he can exist outside of God and the devil on his own. He wasn't he was not created that way. He allowed Satan to take that position in his life in the garden when he committed high treason. God's nature is life. Satan's nature is death. It's the opposite of God. Two words will unravel so many mysteries of the Bible. Life and death. Life and death. The Bible is the plan of God to, pro to extend his nature, his life, into a whole race of, um, of hum humanity as his children to have a father God child relationship with him. Satan's goal was to destroy that and create a relationship of God's children with him to overthrow God and institute his evil into them. And when you look through the Bible, you see the battle beginning to end of good versus evil. The love of the Father to restore his creation back to himself after the very Man he created committed high treason against him. And I got to go there. I didn't want to go there tonight. And the there was not a there was not a being in the universe because it was high treason that could pay the price to redeem Adam, man, except God himself Abraham the Lord will provide himself a ram figurative speech double meaning literally a ram at that moment as Jehovah Jireh but also prophetically that the son the second person of the God would come incarnate and take the penalty of high treason and pay the price for it to redeem man. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Spiritual death entered into man at the fall. As soon as he did, God had to drive man from the garden. Why? Because if he had gone to the tree of life and partaken, he would have been forever sealed in that state of spiritual death. God And God put a, a cherubim there and uh, with the entrance. Adam could not no longer go into the garden of Eden because the tree of life was in the middle. He could, no, he could not partake of that tree in that fallen state. My, 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 my.
let's see, I'm trying to look for how much, I've covered a lot of this stuff and just I'm, I'm teaching. So um, the nature of spiritual death is as much a substance, a force, or a fact of life. Spiritual death emanates from the devil. Life, spiritual life emanates from God. When he turned against God, his nature changed and was cast as profane out of his presence. Um, there are spiritual forces working in the earth today. There are. Um, and they're opposed to each other. Love and hatred, joy and sorrow, faith and doubt, good and evil. We just keep going back and forth. Um, they didn't come from the same thing. All the good comes out of God. Yet, we blame God for everything. Hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, and other acts of God. But they got it right. Just take the God word, the letter G, and make it a lowercase G, and you got it. The God of this world, Satan. It's not the Father God. Um, Satan's nature comes out of him. There's there's hatred. There's lust, murder, um, unclean, evil. Um, there, you can't understand. The condition and problem of humanity without knowing that spiritual death, the nature of Satan reigns over men. We look, we look at natures and we see plagues and we see all this kind of stuff. Um, you look at, in, in, in India where they have two million gods and the poverty and the, um, the diseases and, and all the stuff. And why, why does God let that happen? He doesn't. It started when Adam transferred authority to the devil, and the devil is evil. He hates the creation of God. He's hideous. Spiritual death, a hideous monster, seized sovereignty from when Adam turned it over to him. That dominion, the lordship of, of, uh, over creation, Romans 5.17 says, By the trespass of one, death reigned. Death assumed a personality. It's the reality of the reign of Satan. The Bible said when Satan was cast out, he came down having great wrath. He wanted to destroy anything that God had created. Now, whether you want to, you know, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there because, you know, we, you know, there's a, there's a, we call it the gap theory. Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2. God had created the perfect world. Satan was the under ruler at the time, not, the, you know, and that he was an anointed chair. He was covered in di uh, uh, diamonds and topazes and emeralds. And uh, he walked on the circumference of the earth and, um, you know, and he, he then tried to overthrow heaven. And when he was cast out, he came to the earth and that caused the earth to go into chaos. And God did a, recreation separating everything and creating man and making man the ruler and told him to subdue the earth and replenish it you can't replenish what hadn't been I know this isn't the right word but plenished if I got a pantry over here and I just moved in this house I don't say let's go replenish the pantry no we got to stock it initially and once it's stocked initially then you can go replenish it you can't redo something that hadn't been done and like if somebody comes up my guard six inches high you cut your grass well i ain't cut it i can't recut what i hadn't cut y'all here you going home okay adam had authority to subdue it what was he going to subdue? Just got, got, got done, done creating. Satan, who came down with great wrath. Hebrews 2.14. We're about to wrap this up, and then we'll get into the questions. Hopefully you got all your stuff out. And uh, this, this shows up how much later, Jesse, online, where they can watch it again. Just, so our... Okay, so it won't be long. So if we go through the questions too quick, you can't write them down, go back and, and, and get to the tail end of the broadcast and you can get the answers again when I get to those. 
Uh, she said maybe 15 minutes. For as much, Hebrews 2.14, for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. All right. Satan holds the authority. Jesus came to take it back. The dominion of the spiritual realm is death. It became death. Um, Romans 5, 10, 17, a little translation says, for if by the trespass of one death made use of the one to seize the sovereignty. And then Romans 5, 21, the same translation says, sin as a king in the realm of death. Sin is the king of the realm of death. Death, the nature of Satan, seized sovereignty and God's creation is under its dominion. At the fall of man, this is what this is the, the effect, the result, the consequence of the high treason and fall of man. Death has seized the sovereignty of God's creation. Now we don't leave you there, folks. We're going to talk about the reign of spiritual. Like I said, this thirty seven this is thirty seven lessons. We're going to get to the good stuff, but we also need to establish why the good stuff's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, let's look at the questions here tonight real quick. Now, listen, I'm going to read these again. If you don't get the, if, it, if you don't get a chance to really compare them to yours answers, um, that's okay. In just a little while, you can go back, back on Facebook, pull this up off the face off our Facebook page and, and just slide over and get down to the end and go through that and make sure that you've got like, the right. So what was the nature of Adam's sin? Well, we said it about 30 times tonight. Adam committed high treason. Um, this is due to the fact he was not deceived and possessed great authority and dominion. Okay? He committed high treason. And, of course, that brings us to the next statement. Was Adam deceived and give a scripture? Well, no. 1 Timothy 2, 13 and 14 says, the man was not deceived. Okay? So two, uh, Tim, 1 Timothy 2, 13 and 14. Tell and explain the incident in the New Testament that reveals Satan's authority over creation. Well, that's from the, Luke 4, where Jesus was tempted of the devil, and where Satan tells Jesus that the authority of the kingdoms of the earth are his, and that they had been delivered unto him. And Jesus didn't dispute that statement. If it were not true, he would have disputed it. And, and, and real quickly, we're going to, I mean, in a, a short statement, we're going to explain Romans 5.12. It gives us the picture of spiritual death awaiting an entrance into the spirit of man. It was looking to seize it. Satan was looking for the opportunity. That's why he came to Eve. He was looking for that opportunity. We, now, we don't know that had there, that there been other temptations by the devil or attempts by the devil. Um, we don't know. But we do know on that particular time, she opened that door, then Adam committed high treason, and it seized the dominion that God had given the man. And what is spiritual death? It's a nature. Spiritual death, in reality, is a nature. God is a spirit. His nature is life. Satan is a spirit. His nature is the opposite, death. So spiritual death is, in reality, a nature. What was Adam's twofold death? Adam died spiritually first, and then later, physically, he died as a result of the effects of spiritual death. In dying, thou shalt die. What are the three main spiritual beings? God, Satan, and man. Give, give some scriptures that reveal spiritual death passed on to all mankind. We find that in Romans 5.12 and then um, so Romans 5.12 5.15 and then 5.17 through 19. Okay. And contrast the different fruits of the nature of, the, of God and the fruits of the nature of Satan. So with, and I'm going to go, I'm going to give God then Satan. God then Satan. Okay. Love, hatred. Joy, sorrow, faith, 
doubt. Good, evil. These are the contrasts. Remember, and if you've ever listened to our ministry at all, I've said this numerous times. And I will say it numerous times until we fly in the sky. Okay? That Jesus said um, that the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And so I like to say, you know, if you want to know who's behind it, get you a chart, draw you four columns down the page, and write over the top of them, uh, steal, kill, destroy, and over the fourth of them, write life. And they go down the side and list all the stuff that's going on and then categorize it. Is it stealing? Is it killing? Is it destroying or is it life? Check it off. And then when you get done, go back up above all of that and get you one of them little, I forget what they call it, that little squirrely thing that, you know, what is that thing called? Huh? Where you, where you, you go like this and, and then, you know, where you're, you're combining columns. With the, whatever that thing's called. Yeah. Some kind of bracket that, you know, shows that these are all under this category or, 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 or subordinate to this. And write over the top of the three columns, Satan. And over the column that says life, write God. There's your contrast. If it's producing life, good, love, joy, faith, it's God. If it steals, kills, destroys, it's hatred, it's sorrow, it's pain, it's evil, it's the devil. Jesus said it. The thief cometh not but for to. That's his nature. That's his very nature. He comes for no other reason to institute spiritual death and the effects of spiritual death on the human race. Because he hates God and man is his crowning glorious achievement designed to fellowship with him of his own free moral desire. And yet God has remained true as producing life. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So the, the fall of man the spiritual death of man, the high treason of man, and its effects have left Satan, left spiritual death, having seized the sovereignty over the creation of God. Well, God can do whatever he wants to do. He can't lie. He can't violate his word. The Bible says that Satan is a liar and the father of them that lie. If God were to lie, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If God were to lie, he would instantly be subordinate to Satan since he's already said Satan's the father of liars. Yep. I, I hear some of those theological wheels out there getting some HG 40, some Holy Ghost 40 on them because they're getting the, yeah, mm-hmm. They'll mess some folk up. That's all right. It's good to get your, your theology messed up if it's wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, God can't do anything he wants to do. Not if he's already given his word contrary to that. He can't violate his word. I said he cannot violate his word. I'll say it one more time. He cannot violate his own word. Praise the Lord. Well, I, I hope you were blessed tonight. We covered a lot of ground. And um, praise the Lord. And... Um, you know, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, make sure you're with us next Wednesday night, and we'll, we'll go on and start talking about the reign of spiritual death and, um, you know, so forth.
I want, to, I want you to be reminded on Sunday we're teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, this week we'll be, uh, be teaching on peace and um, talking about the, you know, the necessity of having the fruit of the Spirit work in our lives. And, um, you know, the next Tuesday night is our prayer service. And going again next Wednesday, we'll pick back up here in uh, the Bible in the light of our redemption. Again, if you're joining us and you don't know, we're using the basic Bible course from E.W. Kenyon, the Bible in the light of our redemption. I encourage you to get this. Uh, Amazon.com, uh, Walmart.com. I think it's about with shipping is maybe fifteen dollars. Um, it's a it's a study guide. You write in it. You you study. You fill it out. It's it's good for you, and uh, I just encourage you to have it. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Uh, we're teaching from it, but we I, it should be in your hands. You really ought to have it. Praise the Lord. Um, until we meet again, remember these words from First. John chapter 5 verse 4 and whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith see you next time here faith and victory church online God, good night God bless you